Welcome back to Afro Expo. Today we're going to be looking at one of Nigeria's biggest artists foraging into the acting scene and then the bigger topic is how the Afrobeat genre has slowly but surely been infiltrating the popular music of the world, also known as pop music. Now, I doubt any millennial watching this video would actually know the movie Coming to America. The film was released in 1988. If this movie was a person, it would be a grown adult by now. The movie cast Eddie Murphy as Prince Hakim, heir to the throne of Zamu who went to America and had a lot of funny adventures there to say the least. The first movie cast Arsenio Hall as Simi, Prince Hakim's friend. Other notable cast members of this movie include James Earl Jones, Prince Hakim's father, and Lisa McDowell, Prince Hakim's wife. Fun fact, James Earl Jones voiced the Mufasa character of Lion King. The second edition of this movie is coming out at the end of the year. The big news is David O will be in the film. How do we know this? A black comedian by the name of Michael Blackson tweeted that David O told him he will have a performance scene in the sequel of the romantic comedy movie. This is excellent news for David O's status as an international music act. This movie has other big actors on the cast list. Some notable names that have been added to the cast list of this movie include the legendary Blades actor Wesley Snipes, Kiki Lane, Tracy Morgan, and Leslie Jones. Another musician that will be present on the cast list of this movie is rapper Rick Ross. What is the plot of the movie? Not much has been revealed about the storyline of the movie, but we know Prince Hakim is about to inherit the throne of his alien father. However, Hakim finds out he has a child back in America. Therefore, he has to go back to America to fulfill his father's dying wish, which is to find the kid and bring him back to Zamunda so he can take over the kingdom one day. We say big congratulations to David O on this achievement and we hope for greater successes for him in the future. Now, let's move on to the next topic, which is the invasion of Afro beats into the pop world. Pop music is arguably the biggest music genre in the world and has been known to borrow from other genres. The newest genre to be added to the long list that the pop sound has borrowed from is the Afro beats genre, which has its roots embedded deep into Nigerian music. Afro beats is a genre that incorporates Afro beats with different genres of music, including jazz, high life, pop, and more. You're probably surprised to hear Afro beats, I mean, without the S is the backbone of Afro beats. Yes, there is a difference between the two genres. This is a subject that has faced a lot of controversy among Nigerian music enthusiasts. Let's do a little bit of history to make the difference clear. Afro beats is the genre of music coined by Nigerian musician and revolutionary Fela Kuti. He was widely known for his activism during his lifetime, which cost him a lot, including his mother, Fumilaya Ransom Kuti, who was thrown through a building's second floor window. Fun fact, Fumilaya Ransom Kuti was a first woman to own a car in Nigeria. Moving on, Fela's music was known all over the world and was appreciated by people from all walks of life. The music was a blend of Nigerian Fuji and high life with jazz and funk originating from America. However, he wasn't the only contributor to the Afrobeat genre as the drummer for his band, Tony Allen, was known to come up with the beat, which is the backbone of the Afrobeat genre. Now, what is Afrobeats? Afrobeats was actually coined in the West to act as a general term for the various sounds of Afrobeats. Africa as a whole. As said earlier, it combines the original Afrobeat with other genres of music. It is energetic, rich in percussive sounds, electric hip hop, and auto tune. Many Nigerian music experts disagree with the Afrobeat's term, but that is another topic entirely. In case you've not noticed, many pop artists are always trying to get collaborations with the major Afrobeat artists out of Nigeria and other African countries. If it's not David O, then it's Whiskey or newer acts like Rema. How did this trend start? On April 5, 2000. 2016, the song One Dance was released by perennial hitmaker and rap star Drake, featuring Nigerian Afro Beats artist Wizkid and British singer Kyla. This song went on to be a chart topper and was named one of the best selling songs of 2016. Why was the song associated so much with Afro Beats? What most people didn't know was that apart from Wizkid lending his voice to the song, there was another African in the production team. Apart from 1985 as the main producer, South African DJ Maforisa laced Wizkid's vocals onto the song. Song. These two brother Afro beats to the world. Whiskey went on to future Drake in a song of his own titled Come Closer. Since then, the Afro beats fusion with pop music.
music has been harmonious with many other artists like David O, Rama, Bonaboy, and Yemi Alade collaborating with foreign artists. Other popular songs where Afrobeat stars worked with pop stars, including David O, featuring mighty popular pop star Chris Brown on his smash hit single Blow My Mind. Casanova also featured David O on his single 2 AM along with Tori Lanez. Manny Note enlisted the help of Rema to deliver his 4 AM single alongside Tion Wayne and Black. Bonaboy has worked with several pop artists like Future and YG. Yemi Alade also released a single with Rick Ross earlier this year. What kind of effects have these collaborations brought to the African continent musically and culturally? Musically, it has paved the way for many Nigerian and African artists to bring their music to a wider audience across the globe. Nigerian songs are now played in London clubs and people groove and dance to them. The Beat FM London is known for playing Nigerian songs on the UK airwaves. Two of their presenters by the names of Shupsi Du and D-Boy have attested to the wide growing influence of Afro beats in the UK. It is in clubs, at parties and events and everywhere you can think of the music is played. Even in the US, a DJ by the name of DJ Walla was the one who broke the Afro B heat singles Joanna Drogba to the US airspace and it was well received. Culturally, there has never been a better time to be an African than now. Africans can now walk with their heads high because their ostracized culture is now becoming a cornerstone in the musical culture of the world. Their friends from other cultures now now want to know what that artist said on that song. This brings a sense of importance to African society. Even for the artists, the recognition their music is receiving is immense. David O's Fall was certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America in the US and Canada. This was another big win for Afrobeats, which just happened a few months ago. And it shows how Afrobeats music has been bridging the gap between Africa and the rest of the world. Another artist that got recognized for his body of Afrobeats work is Borna Boy. He was nominated for a Grammy. Even though he didn't win, he definitely deserved to, as last year was probably his best year in music. Other artists like Tiwa Savage, Kiss Daniel, Techno, and IOJ have kept the flag flying high. Most of these guys have now signed deals with foreign record labels, which will help them sell their music to a new audience, which is craving this music now more than ever. Since the takeover of Afrobeat, the demand for producers has skyrocketed. Producers like SARS and P2J have been known to be at the center of making these beats. P2J was one of the main producers and contributors to Beyonce's The Gift album. SARS, on the other hand, has been responsible for several Afrobeats hits in Nigeria. It's not possible to list top producers in Nigeria and not mention SARS. Now, let's look at some arguments against the Afrobeats term. Many Afrobeat purists think that the Afrobeats term watches down the significance and deep connection the Afrobeat brings to the Nigerian culture. They believe the West is just trying to classify the whole of Africa as one. This, they believe, is entirely wrong as the continent is filled with a wide variety of sound. There the argument is that there are so many genres of music in Nigeria, just like there are many genres in the West like house, jazz, funk, and soul. There is Fuji, Akpala, Afrobeat, and High Life, just to mention a few. Therefore, they believe Nigeria should fight for the recognition of these genres and not let them die out, instead of just taking anything the continent's music is called. They also believe more youths creating music from these genres will help preserve the indigenous musical genres of the nation better. Some in favor of the Afrobeat's motion would argue that it is more commercial compared to these indigenous genres. It is a known fact that money is needed to actually chase passion, especially in Nigeria, and most of these guys definitely want the money, so they would instead make music that would bring them money. However, one thing both parties can agree on is that the recognition of music and culture from Nigeria is getting worldwide. This will only enhance the reputation of the country and the continent as a whole. This brings us to the end of this video. What do you think about the Afrobeat, Afrobeats argument, and the influence that Afrobeats has had on pop culture? Don't be shy, let us know in the comment section and if you love content like this don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel see you next time